What's up guys? It's me, Sir Ernest, and today we're going to talk about center of mass. So consider a Cartesian coordinate system wherein a system of particles are situated. So the system of particles have n particles. So this is the number of particles in the system. Okay? So each particle has mass m, i. So let's say this is m1, particle 1. This is m2, particle 2. This is m3, particle 3, and so on. Okay? So let's say this particle uh, is a representative particle of the system of particles. Okay, so let's say this would be your MN. Now, this system of particles, so each of these particles are represented by their respective position vectors, Ri. So for this, this would be our Ri. And that means this, for example, is R1. This would be R2, etc. Now, this system of particles has a center of mass. Okay, so let's say the center of mass is located somewhere here. So let's call that CM. And that the position of the center of mass of the system of particles is represented by the position vector R CM. Now, this RCM, or the position vector of the system of particles, is given by M1 times R1 plus M2 times R2 plus M3 times R3 until you reach Mn times Rn. And then we divide it by, we divide this by the sum of the masses or the total mass of the system. M1 plus M2 plus M3 up to Mn. Using the summation sign, this is equal to uh, 1 over M times the sum of Mi Ri, where i is equal to 1 to n. So here we take note that capital M is the sum of the individual masses of the constituent particles within the system. Now in terms of its components, we now have Xcm, so this is the X component of the center of mass and is equal to 1 over capital M times sum of Mi times Xi for all I. Similarly, the Y component is written as follows. So this is 1 over capital M times Mi times Yi for all I. And for the Z component, this is 1 over capital M times the sum of Mi Zi for all i. Now here we denote that we uh, we note that the center of mass of a system of particles is uniquely defined, but the position vector of the se the center of mass will be dependent on the coordinate system that we use. So, for example, okay, so let's say we have uh, three. We have a three-particle system situated in the x-y coordinate system. The first particle, m1, is found at the origin. Uh, the, x component, uh, the second particle, m2, is found one meter away from the origin along the x-axis. 
and then we have another particle along the y-axis that is situated uh, one meter above the origin okay so the distance between m1 and m2 and m1 and m3 are both one meters okay so the first thing that we can uh, and then let's say for example uh, the the this is uh, each particle uh, is e uh, the mass of each particle is equal to each other so that means m1 would be equal to m2 would be equal to m3 so let's call that uh, common mass to be m so therefore the total mass of the system capital m would be 3m okay so from here we can see that uh, the uh, x component of particle 1 would be equal to 0 y component of particle 1 would be equal to 0 and the z component of particle 1 would be equal to 0. For particle 2, the x component would be equal to 1 meter, the y component, and the z component, oh, sorry, this should be z1, sorry about that, the y component, and the z component of particle 2 are both equal to 0. And lastly, the x component of particle 3 is 0. The y component of particle 3 is equal to 1 meter. And the, y, the z component of particle 3 is equal to 0. So therefore, the x component of this uh, of the center mass of the system of particles will now be equal to m1, which is m, times r1, or x1 would be 0, plus m2, which is m, times x2 will be equal to 1 plus m3 which is m times x3 which is equal to 0 and then we divide it by 3m so from here we can see that the x component is one third meters similarly y component of the center of mass will be m times 0 plus m times 0 plus m times 1 divided by 3m, which is 1 over 3 meters. And you can see that this system of particles uh, belong to the xy plane only. So naturally, the center mass along the z component is zero. So if we're going to uh, identify it here, you can see that the x component would be around one third meter, and the y component would be around one third meter. So this is where the center of mass of the system is equal to zero okay and that's it that's how you generally calculate the center of mass of a system of particles okay so in the next video we're going to talk about uh, the extend our discussion of on the linear momentum of a system of particles Okay, so for now, thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something today. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.